About a two-hour drive east of Vancouver, British Columbia, the HBC Heritage Trail is a newly restored route crossing the Cascade Mountains, 74 kilometers from Hope to Tulamine. Our plan was to fast pack the trail over two days, starting from Tulamine at the eastern end of the trail and spending a night at one of the many free campsites along the way. This would mean covering around 37 kilometers per day as we made our way back to where we'd left a second vehicle at the trailhead near Hope. So it's Friday evening. We just arrived here at the end of the trail. Uh, we're gonna leave John's truck here so that we have this for Sunday night. And tonight we're gonna keep going past Manning Park, past Princeton, all the way to Tulamine. And the idea is to get a fresh start tomorrow morning on Saturday at the other end of the trail. We're just at the trailhead here, enjoying some hot coffee and our breakfast. Oh, we camped just up the road here in a tiny little town called Colmont. Uh, it was quite cold this morning, so when we got up at about six, we pretty much just threw everything in the car and kept driving through Tulamine, which is another uh, small town. Um, everything was closed. We were hoping for some hot coffee, but that's okay. We kept going and we're now at the trailhead and uh, starting to warm up. So we're making our coffee, having our breakfast and assessing this little river that we have to cross. It doesn't look too deep, but it looks pretty cold. Once we're done breakfast, we're gonna pack up our bags. Um, we're hoping to hit the trail by 8 a.m. And of course, we're gonna leave one car here for when we're done tomorrow night. So John, how are you feeling about this river crossing? I can't wait, it looks fantastic. Nice and refreshing way to start the yeah, morning. Yeah, right? yeah, you won't wanna have dry feet at the start. No, <laughs> it's soaking wet from the beginning, then run through all the pumps. It's the only way to go. It's the only way to go. And eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Awesome. Look at us. John's done some swift water training. You can see that he's crossing at a bit of an angle there. Kind of going into the into the currents. And uh, we did pick the widest part of the river here. You know, obviously the water sort of spread out a bit more. So I'm gonna put the camera away for this, of course. I need my poles and I need my balance. <laughs> uh, that was pretty cold. It was definitely moving pretty, pretty swiftly there towards yeah, the middle. Yeah. It was safe, but you know, you wouldn't wanna cross that if it was too much higher. Oh, it's a log book. Hiking, hiking. Running, there we go. Uh -huh. Two people running on August 27th. Huh. September 21st. Oh, there we go, okay. Three, P, three day trip. Looks like the last person to do the trail or at least sign the log book was just over, well, what, two weeks ago. A lot of people doing it in like two, three, even four nights actually. So yeah. apparently one night is fast. Today's date, here to Pierce Creek, I believe. Beautiful fall colors today. And we fit our first creek, so I'm gonna grab some water here. We're gonna be seeing lots of water today, so I think I'm just gonna carry 500 mil at a time, uh, just to save on weight.
all new growth here after being clear cut. It's nice that it's coming back so fast. Just over 10k in, we've climbed close to a thousand meters, which is about half of our climbing for the day. We are about two and a half hours in. That includes a little bit of messing around. I had some problems with my camera. We are readjusting our pack a bit. And so far the trail is really nice. We're quite surprised. We've been mostly on single track. Uh, the trail's in great shape. It's really well maintained, really well marked. And it looks like we're just coming up on our first campsite here. <laughs> that's all that's the same. Yeah. Ah, this is a great site. Yeah. Well, that's funny. And it looks like pit toilet over here. Beautiful rock up here. Oh, and bear food cache is awesome. Yeah. So we are in bear country here. In fact, there are grizzly bears here. So it's really nice to see that they have these food caches. Um, we have a bear bag, an ursac bear bag, but I'm not sure how much I trust it, especially with grizzly bears. So we are definitely going to rely on a food cache when we eventually get to our camp. The HBC Heritage Trail, also called the Brigade Trail, was a route originally used by First Nations for hunting and trade. Bit of fresh snow over there. Yeah. It played an important role in the European fur trade in British Columbia between 1849 to 1860, after the Hudson's Bay Company adopted the route. In 2009, work began to restore the 74-kilometer wilderness trail, which reopened in 2015, allowing us to once again cross the Cascade Mountains by horseback or by foot. Huh. There's all sorts of huge mushrooms on the trail here. So John tells me we're now on the Whipsaw Trail for a couple kilometers, uh, which is a 4x4 track, so we're likely to see some vehicles. We're at about 1,700 meters, uh, so it's gotten a fair bit cooler, but the sun's out, so it's nice. It's probably, I don't know, 9 degrees Celsius. Uh, so really nice running temperatures today. Uh, we'll be camping at about uh, 1,400 meters tonight, so uh, we'll be lower than this, uh, but of course temperatures will drop overnight, so we expect it to be below zero tonight. Um, but for now, it's t-shirts and shorts weather for sure. Yeah. That was a good 7K of 4x4 tracks, so we are happy to be back on single track. A little bit longer than we thought, but at least the miles went by fast.
Beautiful. So we're just stopping for a bite. We've run 29 kilometers. We've covered 1,900 meters. Um, the next campsite is at uh, 34K, so at about five kilometers. Um, and it's mostly downhill from here. We've kind of hit the high point of the trail. From there, we can decide what we want to do, if we want to stay there for the night or if we want to press on to the next one. But it's kind of a shame because this is an amazing campsite and there's amazing views of the mountains. Um, it's really well set up. This would be a great campsite in the summer, uh, but it's a little bit too cold for us now in shoulder season. We're up here above 1800 meters. There's snow on the ground everywhere. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be well below freezing tonight. So we definitely want to drop down a few hundred meters to the next campsite either way. Yeah, just that wind there. So this last stretch has been really nice, but there's also a ton of blow down here, unfortunately. So it's really runnable for a kilometer, then there'll be a hundred meters or so of blow down. It might just be because we're late in the season and there's probably a storm within the last few days, in fact, that blew some of this down. So the Heritage Trail, uh, it's the location of a race, a 50 mile race put on by Mountain Madness. They're the organization that puts on a fat dog 120 miler in a nearby range here over in Manning Park. I made a film about that last year where my friend Adam and I fast packed the good section of the fat dog course and the brigade 50 mile trail race. It's a little bit longer than the heritage trail because they do a couple little out and backs to aid stations on some fire service roads, I believe. But it looks like it would be a beautiful race. You know, a lot of single track, not a lot of views, but some beautiful forest trails. And of course, a bit of history along with it. Oh, we got a bridge. We got a bridge, people. What do you think what works for you distance wise and stuff? Well, let's sit down and talk about it. So what do we do? We did 30, 35, 35k I figure. So we do another one, so that'd be like 47, 47. Mm. Mm, chewy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've decided to press on. We've we've covered about 35 and a half kilometers. Uh, so if we stopped now, that would leave us with um, 39 kilometers tomorrow. 
which would be about right. That would be about half and half. Tomorrow actually has less climbing. It's a net descent, so it should also be faster. But it's also, it's only three o'clock. The next campsite is 12 kilometers away. And that one's on a nice lake. I think we're gonna push on. And that just means that tomorrow, we'll have covered 47K today. So tomorrow we'll only have 27 kilometers left. But you know, I do have a lot of driving to do tomorrow. Uh, it's probably not a bad thing to end a little bit early tomorrow. So we're gonna press on. There are 10 campsites along the trail, each with tent pads, pit toilets, and food caches. Many of these are located at the original historic campsites, where signposts have been erected to describe the trail's rich history of use by First Nations and European fur traders. Yeah, so there's our next stop, Jacobson Lake, 11.5. The trail was originally built to link the Fraser River at Fort Hope and along with it the rest of the coast to the interior of British Columbia. In fact, this was the reason that Fort Hope, which would eventually become the town site of Hope, was built by the Hudson's Bay Company in the first place. In 1846, British fur traders had been blocked from using existing routes from the interior along the Columbia River due to the newly established international border on the 49th parallel. A new route was desperately needed and fast. This new fort and the trail linking it really was their best and only hope. Work began on the trail in 1848 with the help of First Nations who had used the network of trails in the region to hunt and gather for centuries. Horse brigades would begin to use the trail in 1849 and would usually include First Nations guides. Brigades of up to 400 horses would travel west in the spring, loaded with animal pelts like beaver and river otter destined for Asia and Europe. They'd return in late summer with mail and other European goods to resupply the forts, such as food, tobacco, muskets, gunpowder, and the distinctive Hudson's Bay Company blankets with their red, yellow, and green stripes, which had become a popular medium of exchange. But life was hard for the pack animals and the men alike, and many would die on the trail from injury and extreme weather. All right. Sweet. The Hudson Bay Company's fur empire in Western North America depended on the trail for over a decade until the 1860s. By then, gold had been discovered in the Fraser River, and new routes such as the Dudney Trail offered better access to the interior. But the trail would continue to be used for decades by First Nations, as well as hunters, trappers, and miners. You brought the beers, right? I thought you had the beers. I did think about bringing my whiskey, but... The trail had been temporarily revived in the 1860s and was then designated as a protected heritage trail. But it quickly fell once again into disrepair. It wasn't until renewed interest in 2008 that plans were put in place to revive the trail by the Hope Mountain Center. The organization works closely in collaboration with government, First Nations, and private donors. But all of the work to build and maintain the trails is done by a team of passionate volunteers. Yeah, actually, that's, that's exactly a cut beach. So. We slept in a bit this morning till 6.45. Uh, we're just making breakfast, some oatmeal here, some coffee. And then we're gonna try to hit the trail for, I guess about quarter to eight. It's a little bit cool today, but I think once we start moving, we're gonna be fine. How do you sleep, John? Yeah, not too bad. It was um, expectedly cold, a bit chilly, but that's what you kind of think you're gonna have on a night like that. So you look forward to the morning, get going, get warm. Oh yeah, in case you're wondering about my fancy sock liners, 
just trying to keep my feet dry as long as I can. Well, the sun's coming out now, so we should be able to warm up here fairly quickly. Uh, that campsite was nice, but I think I'd recommend, especially if you're coming from the Hope side, if you're heading east, that uh, you stay at the horse camp. We got lucky here. There's only one other couple who had driven in, but this campsite is a car accessible campsite. It's right off the FSR, and it's not one of the historic campsites. It looks like it's something new that they put in. So yeah, I think the historic horse campsite back at the creek so far takes the win. <laughs> Back on the trail. Back on the trail. Let's do it. Looks like there's fresh uh, footprints heading the opposite direction. That'll be the first hiker we've seen all weekend. Probably a section hiker though. So Palmer's Pond is just down over here, but we're gonna save it for the next time. I'm probably just gonna see a bit of cloud, but it's supposed to be really nice. So we just came through a pass here and it looks like this is our high point for today. No views. I'm sure we would have had nice views, uh, but it's nice and moody. As usual, it just means we'll have to come back and do it again. It's huge. It's massive. Oh my god. The log book. Yeah. Wow, four day trip clearing the trail. Wow. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. For Vancouver, Sean. Thanks, Sean. All right, so we've covered just over 10K. We dropped uh, off that pass down a pretty steep section of uh, single track trail. Um, and then finally bottomed out here in the river valley. We've climbed about 500 meters and we descended 1100 meters. We have one more climb to go. I think it's about 500 meters up another pass, but it's like half the height of the last one. And then we're pretty much home free. We'll have about, I don't know, 15K, maybe even 10K from there to go. Uh, no sun, but the trail's beautiful. So we're enjoying ourselves.
So this is cool. You can see I've got the root loaded here on my Coros Vertex 2. And I can scroll along to see the peak that we just came down. Um, I can zoom out here to see the whole trail if I want to. You can see we've got some rolling terrain coming up and then our true climb. And you can see how much elevation here we've done compared to how much we have to do on the entire trail. What are you eating there? Mm? What are you eating? Samosa. Mm. So good. Well, we made it to the top of our last climb here. It says there's a viewpoint where you get 360 views. Of course, that's not going to happen today, so we're going to skip it. But make a note, if you come here on a clear day, go check out the viewpoint. Let me know how it is. And now it's all downhill from here to the car. We really noticed the difference between the two sides of the trail, having started in the rain shadow of the Cascades to the east and finishing in the much wetter west side near Hope. Yeah. Currently, the trail ends with a fairly long stretch of gravel road through an area of active logging. But work is being done by volunteers to replace this with a new section of single track set to open for summer of 2022. So my primary goal had been to get a bit of time on feet with my pack and some of the other gear that I was planning on using for an upcoming race in Namibia. You can learn all about the gear that we carried with us on the trail in a video that I've published exclusively for channel members, which I'll link to in the description below. And you can get access to that by clicking the Join Now button in a web browser. I was pleasantly surprised with the overall condition of this trail and in just how much of it was really nice, runnable single track. And given that it's free to use and there's no reservations needed for overnight camping, I definitely recommend it maybe for an end of season adventure. We didn't see a single other hiker on the trail the entire time. And given how late it was in the season, we also didn't have to contend with some of the bugs that I suspect would be pretty prominent in midsummer. But since we did the trail back in early October, access likely has been affected by heavy rain and mudslides, particularly near Hope. So I definitely recommend checking out and staying tuned to Hope Mountain Center's website for updates, which I'll provide a link to in the description. And there you'll find a lot more information on hiking the trail, as well as some really cool historical images. Whether you're planning on running the route in a day or hiking it over maybe four or five, just keep in mind that it is a backcountry mountain route with all of the potential risks that come along with that. So as always, be sure to bring your essentials and plan accordingly. Remember as well that you are in grizzly bear country, so you'll need to prepare for that. And you can watch my video on how to avoid conflicts with bears if you haven't already, which I'll link to below as well. And lastly, stay tuned for my video series about my adventure in Namibia, which I've been hard at work on and which I'll be publishing very soon.